Hello and welcome to Discover Dorico for March 2022. Um, so this can be part of our audio test. Can you hear me okay? I'm reading the, the chat down here, seeing who all the people are who have joined us live and where you're all from. Um, I'm in the UK, so today, so far, well, let's see, last weekend was 17 degrees. What's that, about 60-something US Fahrenheit? Um, this morning was more like zero. I think it's about five now. We've had snow. So we've gone from really sunshine to snow, and uh, I hope it's a lot nicer where you are. I can see Mark's in southern France, and there's various other people in a lot of places. Um, so I'll read the comments. Uh, I can see Walter would like to see tighter integration between Dorico and Cubase. Well, we're not discussing that today, unfortunately. Maybe we all would, but uh, integration is a big word. Today, we're going to be looking at some Marla. Um, is this a good idea? Let's see. Let's see and find out. So um, I'm going to um, switch over like this so that you can see me, you can see Dorico, you can see... which way is it? That way? You can see... Um, so underneath the video there's a link to an IMSLP um, page where you can download if you want to the um, the score that I'm going to be using. Uh, it's the public domain score that, that's on there and if you want to scroll along then you can find this. Uh, this is actually page 93, although it's labelled in the top corner, 95. So this is uh, Marla Symphony 1 and we're going to look at movement 4. And I thought what we'd do is maybe start from a complete empty template in Dorico. How would you set all this up? What are some of the shortcuts I might use if I was to do this? Um, you know how would you how would you go about this kind of thing? So you may already know this. You may well pick up some hints and tips and things for this particular one. We'll copy some of the bits that um, that make sense to do so. The layout. We'll look at a bit of the condensing as well because the way the horns condense on various pages and and that kind of thing. So we'll we'll look at all of that. But we'll start right from a complete empty template with no instruments. Adding all the instruments, adding all the notes. I think um, things like move to staff below and copy to staff below are probably going to be uh, used quite a lot if this is Sesame Street and this is sponsored by move to staff below or copy to staff below um, and uh, yes the, so let me just check the comments link works okay link to score not working it is it is there um, if you have a look hopefully there that's that's the one I use but it's um anyway if you want it it's on there. Um, you might need to expand the link, maybe. If not, have a search on uh, IMSLP. If you need to, just press pause on this video now, and then you can follow along when you've when you've got the file, uh, or maybe just grab the file later. And if you just want to watch it for now, come back to it later. This session will be available to watch again at your leisure. If I speak too quick, there's also a button at the bottom where you can slow down the audio in YouTube. If I don't speak quick enough, you can skip ahead, but not if you're watching live. Um, and if you are watching live or recorded, don't forget there's also a button at the bottom. I think it's in the little cog for YouTube to make sure you're watching this at the highest resolution. So HD, you may well want to do this full screen. So let's have a look uh, at starting this. So a blank empty project. Let's say this is going to be Symphony 1. Let's say Movement 4. The composer is Marla. The paper size, I'm going to do A3. I'm international, so I'm in the UK. And the rastral size, I'm going to take a guess. We can change it later. We can change either of these things later, but I'm going to guess maybe we want 5.5 mil staves. I don't know. Project will use multiple flows is off, so we won't get flow headers because uh, I don't need them for this, at least for this example. Maybe if we're doing all the movements, I would need them, but at this moment, I don't need them. We'll have the music and the text font as uh, the same as usual. Leave the time signature for now. Key signature, we can change this. So let's say we want F minor. Sorry, that disappeared behind my head, didn't it? See, I chose F, uh, F minor. Um, do you want me to be in the shot or do you want me to get out of the way? Maybe you want to put in the chat. So, you know, do you, is it useful at all seeing me here? Do you know somebody's here and talking or not? You'll have to let me know in the chat. I'll check in again in a few minutes because obviously you're a few seconds behind me due to the internet. So let me just see what's in the chat. I think that's just about the... Yes, they're talking about some condensing options. We will look at those. Um, and yes, actually, hadn't hadn't looked at the bar lines in this one. So yeah, may, maybe we will, maybe we won't. Um, let's see how far we can get in this session. Place your bets now. How many bars will we get? So... We have here a bunch of instruments and that we need to add into Dorico. How are we going to do that? We have single players, section players, and ensembles. Um, I'm using Dorico 4.0.31. 
Um, there were two recent updates, 30 and 31, because there was a little uh, bug that we wanted to fix. So there was a quick hot fix for 31. So you can get that from our website or the Steinberg Download Assistant. So today, if you're watching this again later, this is the 31st of March 2022, and I'm using 4.0.31, and I am using Dorico Pro because I'm going to want to use condensing and various other things. So because I'm using version 4, the Add Ensemble option here, I can add ensembles from here and, uh, and, and build up ensembles and add things relatively quick. So if I type, for example, two pick, then I can have two piccolos that I'm going to need up here. So obviously the condensing will condense it back down to one, but I'm going to need to show two piccolos. So two piccolos, I'm going to need two flutes. So um, two, oh, I didn't put a space, did I? Two flute, there we go. And what else do we need? Four oboes. Four oboes. Um, so I'm just going to press enter and add those for starters. So two piccolos, two flutes, four oboes. Um, I'm also, at the moment, going to untick this little bu button up here, which is the power button, which disconnects the audio engine, because it's easier to add instruments and quicker to add instruments if Dorico's not then loading the samples straight away. You could load them later, but you don't necessarily need to load them you know, as you're doing things, so if you know, sometimes that's useful. Um, uh, um, yeah, okay, um, Sam, unfortunately, some people want to see my face. Sorry about that. Um, so I'll stay for a bit, and then not later. And uh, somebody's just asked, why not start with a template? Well, to be honest, I could start with a template, but I'd still need to add in extra instruments anyway, so I'd need, probably need to add more oboes, more horns, because there's seven. Um, also, I'd need to find the template that had also a clarinet in C and E flat, and add the horns without a key signature and the trumpets in F. So I'm going to just add them this way and show you, if you needed to, how would you build this up? So I said use the Ensemble Builder, and I've added those instruments. But the clarinets in C, I can't do with the Ensemble Builder because they're not easily found in there. So I have to press Shift-P. You can see my keyboard shortcuts will appear on the screen just there uh, as I do them. Uh, so I want clarinet and C. So I'll start typing clarinet. I'm going to press tab and then I'm going to press the down arrow to get to C and add one clarinet in C. So here we go. Here's one clarinet in C. Now I've added, because I need this a fair amount and I don't always use the ensemble builder, I've added a shortcut to duplicate player because it's far quicker than adding multiple clarinets in C. So if you go to Dorico preferences or on a PC it's in edit preferences, Dorico preferences, Go to key commands and search for duplicate and find in setup mode duplicate player. I don't need duplicate layouts at the moment, I just want duplicate player. And I've added a shortcut. Pick your own. I happen to have used Alt D, uh, Option D, but I've uh, pick, pick your own. That, that's fine. So I've added one clarinet in C and I can now just press that shortcut twice and I'll get two more clarinets in C. And they load fairly quick because the audio engine is disconnected at the moment and it, we can reconnect it later. So I also want a clarinet in E flat. So I'm going to do the same for the clarinet in E flat. Dorico's put it up here and I want it down here because if I long press on this, I can change the orchestral order and I just say, actually, don't bother with an order, thanks. I'll do it myself in this particular case because for some reason, the clarinet in E flat is underneath. Then I want three bassoons. I could do that with the ensemble builder, but I could also do it this way and type bassoon and then I could say, tap my duplicate player twice and I've got them that way. Your choice. Horns, I can't do with the ensemble builder because I want a horn in F but I want it no key signature because the horns here are in have no key signature. So I'll add one of those and I guess, I don't know, is it just because it's uh, Mar Marla? I don't know. We now want seven. So I'm going to press duplicate until we get seven horns. So it's all building up down here as you can see. Uh, I want Four trumpets in F. I can't do those with the Ensemble Builder either. It only does B-flat trumpets. So in F, and they're also no key signature. So uh, two, three, four. Pressing the duplicate shortcut for those. I want uh, three trombones. Trombone, one, uh, two, three. I know that later, for some reason, it's not on the first page, but there is a tuba, but it's not shown there for some reason. So I'm going to add the tuba now because I know I'm going to want it later. Uh, I also need two timpani. So there's one timpani. Duplicate for the second timpani. There we go. Duplicate. My duplicate shortcut is working quite well today. Uh, I also need a, um, in, in German, Becken, which is a, a suspended symbol. If you add suspended symbol here, you'll end up with a one-line staff which in this case isn't what I want because for some reason they've got a five-line staff and they've just put it on one 
um, uh, on one of the spaces. So I don't want this suspended symbol here because that would just give me a one line staff in Dorico. I want to create an empty kit. So I'll do create empty kit and then I'm going to press plus and then I'm going to add a suspended symbol to the kit. It's not really a drum kit, but it's a uh, percussion kit if you like and I'm going to move the suspended symbol to the, the space where it wants to sit whoops missed and then press apply I also know for later um, the suspended symbol by default has an X note head and I don't want that either I want a standard note head so either default or unset uh, will do the same thing and give me the a standard note head for the suspended symbol so that will give me now at the moment you're going up oh, it's only showing you a single line Let's fix that when we also do the bass drum because that's going to have the same problem. So add a player, create an empty kit. This is an extra player for some reason. Bass drum. Here's the bass drum and the bass drum is going to be on this space here. So I'll press apply and close. So now we've got suspended symbol and bass drum. A little bit of extra work for these two because by default Dorico is showing you both of those as a single line still. So we go to layout options. So command or control shift L for layout options. Go to players, percussion, and change your percussion one and percussion two to a five line staff so that we get the display. So we were showing a grid, we're now showing a five line staff. Annoyingly, they're now labeled percussion one and percussion two. I know it's a bit annoying. This is where maybe you want to kind of import them if you're using these a lot or set up a template that you use for later. But I thought I'd better show you from the beginning. Oops, I didn't want that one. I wanted to say in this particular case, edit names. And just because we can, we can make it anything we like. So let's revert to the German from the original file here. I guess they're German. The um, Grosser Trommel definitely is. So edit names. Is it gross or grosser? I'm sure somebody will tell me in the chat that I am mispronouncing it because I am British and unfortunately, I'm really sorry, we're rubbish at languages. They are gr.tr. Okay, so now we've got those. We've got the five line staff and we'll use those later and the labels are now correct. And what else have we got? Oh yes, to finish we've got strings. So let's use the ensemble builder. So shift E or that button at the bottom, type strings, choose a string section, press enter. Now we have a string section. So you see now we've got all of the instruments added. They're a little bit crushed at the moment, but um, also when we do the condensing later, maybe that will be okay. So now we can start entering some notes. So I'm gonna to switch to right mode, make this a bit bigger, and now we can get started. So I'm also going to just for, um, oh, I didn't want 4-4, did I? Okay, I'm gonna choose that, press enter. Uh, or I could press Shift M, of course, for meter, and I'm going to say this wants to be cut C. However, I've already checked this. You will actually, for in some cases, want some of the rhythms to be written a bit more like four four. So here's a cheat: in the second bar, then make it four four, and then in the properties panel, Command or Control eight, hide the time signature. So actually, Dorico will be um, beaming and um, uh, you know sorting the notes out, the note lengths as if they're 4-4, but actually we're displaying cut common. And I'm going to hide my signpost because I have a hide signpost shortcut, for, which is um, here if you want to hide your signpost because I don't want them right now. Any questions? Let me just check. Collier, I'm, I'm glad you're here because this is um, this was your, your idea. <laughs> when you sent me the Marla, yeah, this was your idea. This is all your fault. And uh, thank you for the pronunciation. Yes, I am doing a bit German, but anyway. Um, and yes, big drum for the bass drum. So now I'm going to switch to galley view to, to enter a lot of this. So either at the bottom down here, you can switch to galley view, or at the top up here in the view menu, you can switch to galley view, and I'm going to use this shortcut. So command shift two. On a Mac, it's kind of mash your thumb on uh, those two buttons at the same time, press two. Um, so now let's enter some notes. How long has that taken so far? Yeah, sorry, but you know, we're, we're, we're there now. So, uh, so at the beginning up here in the piccolos, double click, I've got my carrot line and I can enter notes. So for the piccolos that we've got here, um, you can either just do it for one piccolo or for both piccolos at the same time. So if I do shift down, 
um, it's down arrow, then I can extend the carrot line over both. So of course, both piccolos are the same because they're going to condense in the end. So if I just, and I'm just going to choose, it's quite a long note. So I'm going to choose nine because it's our longest note value here. So I just choose nine and then on my MIDI keyboard, press a D flat and hopefully if, is my keyboard on? School by error, my keyboard isn't on for some reason. Hang on a second. There's a question in the chat. Are we going to hear Vienna Symphonic Library's Synchron Strings Woodwinds Brass? All going well. Let's have a look at some sample libraries at the end for this. Yeah, all going well. Let's let's try that. Um, for some reason, this particular file um, my um, isn't working with my MIDI keyboard. So I'm just going to save this for a second. And just check my keyboard is happy. It's there. Um, let me restart Dorico again. Normally it picks it up without having to do this, but this is live. So things happen, don't they, when you're trying to do things live. Talk amongst yourselves. And I just reload the same file that we've just set up. So we've got the template that we set up before. I suppose if you want a copy of this one, I can probably sort that out for you later. Aha! Right, now in the very bottom corner of my screen, I've said aha, right down here, you see there's a little green light coming on now. So now I know my MIDI keyboard is working. Not quite sure what I was doing there, but there you go. It is live. So from this beat here, can we now get the longest note I want? Yes, and put an accent on it. Yeah, so we could do that at the same time and press D flat. There we go. Um, what I didn't do is um, extend the carrot to the other instrument. Never mind. We can sort that out in a minute. So now I want this note to be slightly longer. If you're following along, I won't show the score at the same time because we'll, we want as much of the screen as possible. So I'm just going to press Alt Shift Right, which extends the note along the rhythm grid. And from the bottom left hand corner down here, you can see my rhythm grid is set to eighth note or quaver. Um, then the, uh, the next note, I will speed up while I'm doing this, but you know we, we, I'm talking at the same time. I'll enter the next note. Uh, actually, both of these are too high for the piccolo, so I'm just going to drop them an octave using Command Alt and uh, the down arrow. Um, there was also a, tar a slur between these two notes, um, but the way it's written in the score is it only goes from the end of this one to the beginning of this one, and we're going to want this quite a lot. So this is one of the engraving options, but what you want to know is it's something to do with slurs. So if you press J for jump bar and then start typing slur, if I could type slur, you get to slurs engraving options, and it gets you straight to that particular section, which is quite nice. Um, and the options that we want in this case, if you click on tied notes over here, we want to start from the last note in the tie chain, and we want to end on the first note in the tie chain. So if I agree that, then it will change my slur just to do this, which is what this particular um, uh, example is doing. Um, there's also, if I select this note here and press Shift D, I can put the fortissimo on there. And both of these um, piccolos are doing the same. So in the edit menu under special, uh, paste special, there's a duplicate to staff below. So similarly to move to staff above below, there's duplicate to staff below. Um, and because the shortcut, the default shortcut here is Alt-M and Alt-N for November, um, then the duplicate ones, I've just added a key. Now on my Mac it makes sense to just say Control-Alt, not Command, but Control-Alt, N and M, because that's the key you know, to the left of it, so I can just add that, and it's a similar concept for me. Add whatever shortcut you like. Um, it's also in the right-click menu here for Paste Special, and you have the same options here as well. So in the Preferences, in Key Commands... We were doing um, duplicate earlier, weren't we? But du that was duplicate in here. Now we're doing the note editing, duplicate to staff above below, set yourself a shortcut, off you go. So I'm going to use that shortcut. So I've got these selected and I'm going to use this quite a lot today. So now the two piccolos are going to be the same. I'm then going to duplicate it for the flutes as well, which is automatically up an octave because of the uh, difference between the flutes and the piccolos. But this last note is a lot longer for the flute. So I'm going to press 9 again just to make it longer. Uh, I'm going to just, for, for ease while I'm talking, I'm just going to press um, Alt, Shift, Right arrow. And then this note will get as long as I need it to be. Uh, I think I've gone too far, haven't I, already talking. Um, so I'm just using that to extend and uh, and contract notes. So Alt, Shift, left and right arrow, I use quite a lot. Um, so this one also, for some reason, in the middle of this note, 
I'm just checking the other example here. Yes, they've got a diminuendo in the middle here. So I'm going to start the carrot. Because I'm in the middle of a tie chain, start the carrot, type Shift D, type Dim, press Enter, nothing happens. Press the space bar because this is basically the same as a hairpin, and it's kind of saying, how long do you want that to last for? And if you keep pressing the space bar, then it gets longer over the beats that you can see there on the rhythm grid. So I'm going to uh, get rid of that. Now in the next bar, for some reason, there's also a hairpin, so I'm going to press the hairpin um, button, and then the space bar again. Now the hairpin button, there was um, shift and what looks like a hairpin. So you're greater than, less than symbols on the keyboard. That's your hairpin. Uh, you can do it in the popover as well, but you don't actually have to for hairpins. You can just do hairpin. And then I'm going to do for, for the um, uh, piano, which happens at the end here, shift D, press P and put that in at the end. Turn the carrot off with enter. Uh, and so the flutes, both flutes are playing the same. So here, both of these, now I've got a feeling I'm missing a bar. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, no, it's correct. Um, doing this while talking, tricky. So now duplicate that so both flutes are also the same. It so happens that all three or three of the out of four oboes are the same. So I'm going to duplicate those as well. My duplicate shortcut is working well. And the fourth one, if I duplicate this one, this note is actually shorter. Choose how you want to make this shorter. You can make it shorter with, you know, the note length option here. Um, you could, so I, you know, press eight, make it shorter to a, a, a semi brief if you want to. Use Alt Shift left and right, up to you. I don't need these two dynamics now in this particular part. It just has this diminuendo instead. So that's the fourth oboe part uh, done, and the clarinets are basically doing the same as the other oboes were. So if I take this oboe part, I can Alt click down here. I suppose I could use copy and move and those things I'll just alt click this time because I selected this first rest as well I knew I could click at the beginning and it would uh, copy to that position you can still move things later if you want to but just be careful sometimes so I'm going to duplicate those for the uh, other two clarinets the fourth clarinet is playing the same as oboe four so let's take that one and put that one there and then you realize that you're not doing this in transposed view. So you go to edit transposing transpose pitch, and now you can tell that the clarinet is actually correct because he should be transposing. The bassoons, what are the bassoons doing? They're doing the same as the clarinet. So let's copy that one. Oh, wrong octave. So command alt, or if you're on PC, I suppose it's control alt uh, down arrow to drop that to where that wants to be. And then it so turns out that actually the bassoons are in a different clef at this point. So shift C and type tenor, tenor clef. And then you realize that you went too far and that should actually be up there. Uh, no, it shouldn't. Ah, oh, it's not not exactly the same and then that needs to be have a natural on it so press zero the number zero um so sharp and flat are um so we're using these buttons here really on the left but um flat and sharp are the minus and what has a plus on it it's actually equals isn't it but it has a plus on it and so natural is zero and then this note should be there so that's the um bassoons so i'm going to copy all of this to the other two bassoons. I'm not too worried about these collisions at the moment. That's simply because I'm using uh, galley view. Um, if that does worry you and you want a bit more space between things, in layout options for this layout, the full score layout, in um, vertical spacing, you can change the galley view, expand, expand the ideal staff gaps. So if you're doing this a lot, make it 175 or something. There you go. And you'll get less collisions when you're doing this. It depends how spaced out versus bothered about collisions you are in here. Obviously the the collisions and the layout and everything else is different in page view anyway, so that none of that is affecting page view. The French horns, what are they doing? They're doing basically the same as kinda nobody, sort of similar-ish to the clarinets. So let's take this one, I think. Are they doing the same as the clarinets? I'm I'm looking at the wrong line, apologies. Oh, this, I suppose they're somewhat similar to the bassoons. Let's take the bassoon one then. So we take the bassoon one and we'll duplicate that down here. We can remove that clef. And that's better. Except this one is actually a lot longer. So I'll press 9 to make the note a bit longer. And then realise it was a bit too long. Make it a bit shorter with my um, Alt, Shift, Left arrow. So the horns, to start off with, all four horns are doing the same thing. So... 
Uh, so now I can just do that for all the those four horns and the five, six, and seven finish slightly earlier. So this note. Oh no, hang on. Is that have I got this the wrong way around? I have. I have. These ones are longer. Is anybody paying attention in the chat? You're probably paying attention. He's, he's not doing this right, is he? Oh, he's not doing this right. Um, there we go. So this one's longer. These horns are the ones that are shorter. There we go. So there's the horns. The trumpets are doing the same as the first set of horns. So we'll take these notes. Oops. Ah, tied note. I need to select here, which will select the whole tie chain. There we go. Uh, there's the trumpet. What's the trumpet doing? Which octave is it doing it in? The trumpet is playing here. And it's actually one long held note. So that is actually... So if we select all of these and press T, then it'll tie them all together and we'll get one long tie chain. Because the note was long enough, it was just uh, didn't need to be um, two notes. And so I can copy those. Tum trumpet 2 is doing exactly the same. Trumpet 3 and 4. Ah, no. Trumpet 3 is doing that. There we go. And then the trumpets also have the diminuendo hairpin at the end here. So they also want a hairpin. And then right at the end, they're going to go P. So we'll take that and we'll just select these two items and we'll just duplicate those to the other trumpets instead. The other example, the other um, useful thing here with using the copy to stuff below is that you know they're in exactly the right place. So they're in exactly the same place between all of them. So when you come to do condensing, they are in exactly the same place. If you alt click things and you get them in slightly different places, Dorico knows they're in slightly different places, so it won't necessarily condense them all together. So it's a useful option actually also when you're thinking about condensing as to how are these things going to work. Let me just check in the chat for a second and see if I've missed anything. What bar is this? Thanks, Lily. Yes, yes. Um, actually, I'm quite thankful that this score has at least some bar numbers on it, because um, they don't always. Um... Oh, has YouTube made a mess of the link at the bottom? Apologies about that. Um, but yes, hopefully that's um, th that link's working, but it looks like oh, all that's okay. So where do we get to? Uh... Oh, the trumpets. At the end over here, in bar six, the trumpets have an extra little thing here, don't they? Uh, in fact, the trumpets and trombones, I think. So let's say in all of the trumpets, so extend the carrot, um, work out which octave my MIDI keyboard's in, choose the right note value and a staccato dot, and then remember that we're working in... F oh, no, we're not. No, we're not. We're, remember which key you're doing things in, which instrument you're doing things in, and then hopefully all is good. There we go. So... The trumpets all need that, and actually they all have a forte at that point. And the three trombones are doing the same. So now I'm going to take these here and that bit there. I'm going to do that and put it down an octave and copy it to the trombones. So that's that last little bit on page one for them. The tuba isn't doing anything yet. He has not yet appeared. It's tempting to say from the bar, but that would be mean. No, he gets a rest at the moment. And the timpani start here, and they do this. And then I'm going to just press Shift and the left arrow to select them all. Press uh, Shift-O and type TR for, to put the, uh, the trill in there. And then select that one and do... See, I do kind of a mixture of am I using the mouse or not? I do sometimes other times I don't you know whatever feels quickest at the time I kind of leave the mouse roughly in the middle so it's not having to move too far when I do things also in case you're wondering I have a trackball in one hand and I have a trackpad in the other because the the scrolling is nicer on the trackpad than it is on the trackball but it's quite nice sometimes you anyway doesn't matter um so I just uh, double click there and do the same here 
and their dynamics with these notes selected goes like that. Oh, and they also wanted... Oh, actually, while these were selected, I probably could have just pressed that. Um, and then you'd have to extend it. Is that any better? No, I, I prefer the other method. But anyway, whatever works for you. So the, um, the Alt-Shift left and right will also extend and contract those things should you need to. This symbol here, when I just double click on the staff, it only has one option because we only defined one instrument on this five line staff. So all I have to do is press six for a quarter note and then press Y, which is default note. I'd have to think about what the pitch is, just press Y. I'll turn the carrot off with enter, press shift D and triple F. And then in the bass drum down here, uh, I will do, I bet some people are thinking, why is he doing it that way? Exactly the same again, just press Y and it, it gives me that uh, that note. I suppose if you really want to, you could change this percussion clef. According to the original, they were using bass clefs. So you could, if you want to, put a bass clef in here. So, you know, in this staff here, if you do Shift C and type bass or F, then uh, you, could, you could have that, oops, if you wanted to. I don't know where I was then. You can have a bass clef if you wanted to. Okay. Then you don't want a key signature, you know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'll leave it with a percussion clef for now. Um, that didn't add the dynamic. Apologies. And then we get to the strings. So in the strings, the violas, cellos, and contrabass kind of start, and they have a pizzicato note here. So we can choose uh, the quarter note note value and do that. And I'm just going to put the triple F on it like that. There also happen to be, if I press um, shift P, I can type pits and they get pizzicato. And now all of this is basically the same for the cellos, except down an octave. And if I deselect this note here and then do copy to stuff below, then I've got the contrabass. So that's the um, the opening string pits. Um, and then in, oh, I didn't put the, uh, the metronome mark in at the beginning. Apologies. Let's click up here doesn't matter actually just at the beginning um shift t let's do this in the german to be honest this could be you know the, the weather in any day in the uk apart from today where we have sunshine and snow and then you can either type seven because i want half note or you can type h for half note equals 92 and put the brackets there we go if you also like to display this in multiple places sometimes with the system objects like the you know the rehearsal numbers, things like that, and the rehearsal numbers in this case, letters in some cases, um, then in layout options for staves and systems, for system objects, you can say that you want them to appear in multiple places. And sometimes when I'm working on things, I'll do this and kind of add them because I've got a useful visual what's going on uh, uh, and where. The other thing you, can, you might want to do is use the new instrument filters uh, option because then when there are things that you're copying, if you're copying, for example, from the woodwinds down to the strings, creating uh, a filter that includes even if it's just the flute and the strings, so you can copy bits between them is also quite useful so that you have less scrolling up and down. Um, so use those instrument filters if you want to. So now you can see they're in multiple places. Um, also at the beginning here, there's a, um, a rehearsal number. So if I press J and start typing rehearsal marks, then it will jump me to the engraving options where I can say I want numbers and I also don't want an enclosure like this. And if you want them to be a bit bigger in library font styles, I start typing rehearsal marks, you get rehearsal mark font and just change this size to whatever you fancy to be if you want it bigger. There you go. There's a larger number one if that's what you fancy. Um, so the strings, that's what I was doing. Concentrate, do the strings. So the violin one here starts on the second eighth note. Um, check my MIDI keyboard's in the right place. Uh, does have an accent on the first note and is uh, eighth notes. So I can then use, I'm gonna use this, do this from the MIDI keyboard instead this time. So, and then the next note is a tuplet. So I'm gonna press the tuplet button, which on my keyboard is semicolon. And I, this is a five in the time of four. And then if I can do this without having fat fingers, I'm gonna turn the tuplets off. So that's shift and colon basically and then I need to start a new one which is six in the time of four because this one's slightly different and then go like this as I've proven before in these sessions oops I can't talk and do this at the same time can I I've also realized you're not hearing anything and neither am I because I turned the audio engine off at some point uh, oh actually no it's because the volume is down it's okay uh, where are we now mm -mm. 
and then I want another tuplet, six and a time of four. Turn the tuplets off and do that. So that takes us to the end of that string part. These two notes, so shift left arrow to select both of them, do shift R and they need to be tremolo, so just press three and they will get the tremolo. And from here to here, which I'm going to use the mouse and shift to select all of these, they want a slur. That one wanted an accent that I missed as I was doing it. Um, there was a dynamic here. And now I'm adding all of these things to this violin first. Oh, I should have done this one at the same time as well. There's a dynamic there. Uh, what was it? It's a hairpin to triple F. Um, I'm adding all these the, the this violin part first because the second violin is exactly the same. And while I could have used the multi-carat input between the two, actually, when you've got various things you want to do, you then have to copy potentially the articulations, which you can do, and cut the dynamics, which you can do, but I'll just do the whole thing and then I'll move it all at the same time. And then this bar here is the same in the violas. Oh, I missed a note, sorry, and that one. Um, but they want a dynamic here. And they also need to know that they're arco. So I've got a feeling my audio is going somewhere else. Bear with me a second. Oh no, that's okay. Let's see where that's going in a bit. Uh, so I've got the oh sorry the arco. So um, normally when you click on that, you'll hear it, so that you'll remind you that it's still pits. And now we have the arco that was there, and then this point. I want to copy that down the octave and copy that with a different clef. So at this point, they go to tenor clef. Correct. Uh, so I think now, I don't know how long that's taken. Too long. We've done page one. Let's speed up a bit and do some of page two, shall we? And then we can have a look at playback and condensing and various other things because we'll have a bit of content to work on. So that's the first bit. So we're up to seven bars. Apologies. Let's, as I said, let's speed up a bit. So in this bar here, start the top again. Uh, so I'm going to do the same for the piccolos. That's a little high. MIDI keyboard set's quite high. Ah, oh, yes, and I'm getting both, aren't I? Ah, oh, dear. I should pay attention to where my... Um... Oh, look, that's what's happened, look. When I added that earlier, it added it to the piccolo. Why did it do that? I obviously wasn't paying attention to what I clicked on. I'm sure somebody in the comments had noticed and probably gone, that'll trip him up later. Yeah, it did, didn't it? Uh, right, MIDI keyboard set correctly this time. Aha, we're getting somewhere. Uh, turn that off. Do So if I say dotted quarter, then I can enter that all in one go, and I forgot I didn't want a staccato dot on it. And both of those want to be triple forte. And actually, these also, I'm going to press Alt and minus, just change them enharmonically to exactly match what was going on there. Um, this is then the same for the flutes. Oops, sorry. This is the same for the flutes, but down an octave. It's the same for both flutes. It's the same for all four oboes. It's the same for all three clarinets and the clarinet in E flat. There we go, that's all of those. And then the oboes later on, they basically do the same thing again. I suppose you could take these notes if you wanted to. If you take these and alt click here, then you could say here are you know the same notes. You could also use the option for the um, dynamic intensity if you wanted to. So I can't remember it's a default, but I've got Alt D set to change the dynamic intensity down by one and um, Alt F because it's next to it for more Fs. Um, so yeah, 
I don't remember if that's the default or not. So can can somebody remind me in the in the chat? And then I'm going to change this one to a, a half note, and Dorico is going to do this. And if you're copying the original, then it's a it's a minim. So I'm going to press O for force duration. You can see the little padlock um, has lit up, and I'm just going to make the note shorter and longer just to force that to be the duration I want it to be. And then I'm going to select those notes and copy them to all of the other oboes. There we go. It's best to make that change once and then copy it because then the properties of that get copied with it. Um, that also happens later on for the bassoons, except the bassoons then have it as a much longer note, which ends there and then ends with an, uh, another note uh, here. And there's a slur, so if I just press S, then because of the slur settings we've already set, then we get the correct slur at that point as well. They happen to be doing this triple F, so I'll use my dynamic intensity shortcut to change that. And all three bassoons are doing the same. And the horns here, horns one, two, three, four are all doing the same. Good, good. Horn five actually bizarrely is missing at this point from the score. I'm not sure where, um, but I'm going to presume that they're meant to be doing the same, and six and seven are doing the same as well, so we'll do that. Somebody's asking which keyboard I use. Um, well, I should probably use a bigger one for this. I'm actually using a, a Yamaha CP. Um, it's one of the Reface CP ones, so it's only got three octaves, uh, and they're mini keys, but I quite like the action on them. And also, if I want it to, this keyboard can... Um, I have it has little speakers on it so it can play something back to me if I want it to but also it's got a, a vol a, an octave switch on it where I can actually see which octave I'm in so I've got no excuse for being in the wrong octave even when I am um but yes uh, that's the that's the one I'm using at the moment so that's that bit and now the um trumpet one isn't doing the same so if I do that he's not doing the same but if I now do move then trumpet two is doing the same um so I can have that for trumpet two except trumpet two does this as a shorter note, which again I want to use force duration on to get it to be to look exactly correct, and that note doesn't exist anymore. And then they're also doing different dynamics. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to say unlink. So they're not linked to these other dynamics up here anymore. When I now select this one, it's on a, it's not joined to that one because they're only playing this at two Fs. I don't know. Why? They're, everybody else is three Fs and they're only two. I didn't write it because I'm not a composer. Um, so now I can copy those to uh, those instruments. I can fill in the other bits. So we've got here trumpet one is playing a relatively long note here, which ends here. Um, there's also, as we did before, there's a diminuendo in the middle. So I'm using the space bar to make that bigger. Trumpet two is sort of doing the same, probably wants that, wouldn't say it's absolutely clear, but I'm going to say is, and trumpets three and four want the note, but they only want it to be that long, and they want the same, and I've just realised I've missed an accent of all of those, so I'm going to just press accent button. Um, so that's the same for all of those. Trombones are doing very similar to this, but not up there. And then they also, or at least this one, seems to have a P just there, so he's kind of fading out at that bit. Trombone 2 is similar, but not the same. Um, so, oops. <sighs> Entering the wrong note now. So, you know, make that the length you want. Copy it down from the other one or not. Up to you. You do want the dynamic, though. And I'm now lost where I am. There we go. And then I think I had a, a held note here. That one, trombone three, is apparently doing that. And also that. So that's trombones. Now, there's also a the um, timpani feature quite a lot here, so one, two, three, four, the timpani do that, and they do that, and they, oops, they do that, and now in the middle of this bar here is where the FF is written, and if you open the properties panel at the bottom, so command or control 8, then there's a prefix 
of Sempre. So if you want to add that, that's probably the way I'd do it. I just pressed escape there to quit the carrot. And that one, I don't quite know where that ends. I'm going to say it's about there. And then this one here basically does the same. I probably could have copied it from the other one, but never mind. And they also have a one of those, one of those, one of those. Um, when he's finished over here, I've just pressed save. That was why the uh, my uh, I know there's an auto save. I still press Command S regularly. Um, when he's finished here, this one carries on here, and he also wants to do that. And over these notes here, we want an FF, a hairpin, and an MF. There we go. And then at this point here, he carries on. And presumably on the next page, something else happens. You know, but there's probably does the same again. Let me just check the comments. Ah, Mark has a different increase intensity. Yes. Um, I also need a force duration on the horns in that bar. Did I do that? I'm not sure. If I, uh, I, I, I did do for some force duration, so hopefully I did. I missed the fact the horns are muted. Yes, that's true. Yes. Um, I didn't mark those, did I? Okay, yes, um, I should probably have marked those. Um, although in our default library, and in many libraries, there isn't a sample for muted horn anyway, so it's not going to sound correct. So let's leave it for now and carry on and get some more notes in instead. Yes, I'm glad you are, you're, you're really into this. I'm, I'm quite pleased that you're uh, still here to be honest never mind paying attention um right let me do that symbol note there which also needs a forte and the strings so here we've got i'm just going to have to move my um, page slightly so i can see what's going on in the strings so in no not that bar in bar nine uh the strings are doing something very similar to somebody else did earlier so this is where you could probably use an instrument um sorry uh an instrument filter because you want some of these notes i'm going to guess it's these ones here uh, and you want them lower down and if you're doing that a lot instead of flicking up and down create an instrument filter that, that adds all of those but since we're just going to do a short a small example today i'll paste those in instead move them down an octave um that wants to be much longer and ends on a b natural um there is a dynamic just here and also another one here um, and then all of this is almost the same oh no that was right almost the same for everybody else with a few tweaks and changes so this is where these two in the middle need to be uh, piano so these all need to be unlinked what you could do is you could then relink these two, and you might want to set shortcuts for these. I saw noticed on um, Facebook somebody was talking about these and uh, linking and unlinking shortcuts. So linking, think of a big L. Uh, it's linking is because they're that way. If they're grouped, then it's uh, left to right. But these are linked. So now if I change this one, for example, and say actually that one's supposed to be a P, then they'll both change because I've only linked those two and I've unlinked them from from the rest of them. Um, that may be useful in some cases. This note here wants to be actually a lot longer and also wants to have a tremolo on it, same as this one. So that's Shift R and three for that one. Uh, what have I missed? Anything? No, that's okay. So, oops. Oh, I just dragged that by accident. Um, this bar needs to do actually yes. So let's let's put this put this one in for a second. And now the next bit, let's do with a MIDI keyboard, and then we can, um, oh, you know what I said about the octave thing is in the right place, and I can see it and use it. Well, not only that, I can't even press the right notes. Um, mm, 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 mm. There we go. All of these notes, I should have used the, my mouse, uh, you want to do shift R and press 1, um, and then from this point it wants to be triple f and from here to here 
they want to be uh, copied to the staff above. So I'm going to use my copy to staff above shortcut instead of below this time. And if we're being exact, I suppose, on the text thing here, it says wild. Um, so what then we have this note. Oh, I missed the tremolo. Wants to go into the cellos. And at this point here, they want to plonk. So let's do that on a MIDI keyboard. So you can press two notes at the same time. You could also use the intervals pop over, I suppose, and, and add it that way. And then this bit wants to basically be the same down here. Oops, I copied too many notes, didn't I? Apologies. I don't want that one. But actually, that one probably wants to be, I'm guessing, there it does. And this one, when you click on it, if you're doing this at home, you'll notice that you want it to be Arco because it will still sound pits because the last time they played was pits. Um, there are some interesting hairpins in the middle here as well. So at this point here, I'm going to press the um, hairpin for a crescendo uh, and press the space bar until it gets bigger. Then I'm going to reselect it. I'm going to go to the properties panel and you can use prefix or suffix at this point. And I'm going to write multo cresc dot and put the modifier inside so that, oh, I've written it wrong. There we go. So now I get that one, and now if I copy that stuff below, then I get all the properties and everything with that one too. So there's um, it's not exactly the same style as the one in the original, if you're really following, but really, I think that's probably good and good enough. So I'm going to copy all of these, but I don't want the Arco, because all of this happens again on the first beat here. So I'm just going to alt-click here, and we get uh, all the same things again. Although, interestingly, I've just noticed that's not true, because they need an F clef and they only need one note. There we go. Um, what did we miss? What did we miss? So we've missed a couple of bass drum notes. Apologies. So there was one here. Just press Y. Oh, help if I chose the right note duration, wouldn't it? And there was also the same thing again here. Alt-click. Um, what else have we missed? Oh, there was a chord up here, wasn't there? Oh yes, we've we've missed a chord. Um, so the bassoons and horns and trumpets are all playing a chord. So let's go for the bassoons here. So the bassoons are now back in the bass clef. So I'm going to copy that change I've just made down to the other bassoons. Um, play a chord on the MIDI keyboard. Uh, oops, no. Extend the carrot and play a chord on the MIDI keyboard. Um, and then that one also gets copied to here, and I should have added the dynamic before I did that. And then underneath them, the horns, the first four horns are playing a chord, which is that. So I've played a four note chord on the MIDI keyboard and it's divided it up over the four horns, and that will condense back again um, later in a minute. The other horns are doing so horn... Yes, horn five is missing, but has a note. Yeah, I thought so. I thought they might be here somewhere. So we want this. Oh, no, I've got that wrong, haven't I? Uh, they actually want to be there. Two E flats, one C, yes. Uh, I forgot my dynamics again. Copy to staff below. There we go. Uh, who else is playing in here? Trumpets. I should have copied more of this, shouldn't I? Is Lily rolling her eyes at me in the chat by any chance? I'm not going to look. She's probably thinking there's far quicker ways of doing this, but I just want to get to the end of this page now. And what are the trombones doing? I'll bet they're doing the same as well. I'm alt-clicking and moving it that way. Ah, oh, typical they're not. And neither are these. There we go. There we go. Right. Oh, they're open again. Oh, yes, because we didn't put the mutes in. They wouldn't have the samples anyway. So, <laughs> the giant curly bracket, not a chance. I've never seen a giant curly bracket like that in other things before. And I can think of a couple of ways of doing it. Neither of them are particularly nice. And um, We've already been going for nearly an hour, and I'd like to talk about the condensing and the useful bits. If you really, really want that curly bracket... I'd probably have to say that you did adding it as a line on 
the timpani on something that doesn't condense because it needs to be attached to something and then manually positioning it and if you can do a line like that and you know add the text to it maybe it's not nice it's either that or it's a graphic and something you know yes maybe one day we can add something that does that you've also got another one to add at the bottom i wouldn't i'm not saying i'm not sure it's adding anything for the amount of pain it's going to cause you could also do it, i suppose in in engrave mode in a text box but adding the text sideways also isn't going to be very nice it's it's not nice um i think lily just called me a snowflake Let's move on. Um, so, where have we got to? We've got to the end of page two. Let's have a look at some of the condensing because we've got a couple of pages to work with. And then I've got a... Here's one I made earlier, Blue Peter, because I've got a bit further in, in this one and we can have a listen to it, Is that, if that's okay with everybody. So, let's go back to page view and turn the condensing on. I have a, short, a shortcut here for condensing. So, we turn the condensing on. Let's have a quick look at the, the condensing. So, the... Um, there are a couple of places you can set condensing and it makes a difference as to how you do it. So for example, the oboes here says one, two, three, four, and they're all playing the same thing. But in the score, they've put oboe four separate. I don't know why, I'm not clever enough to know. But let's do that. Now if you do this in layout options, you can go to players condensing and you can set up custom condensing groups. But if you do that, Dorico can then do its clever condensing inside that custom condensing group. So if I make a custom condensing group for oboes 1, 2, 3, then it, Dorico can cleverly condense them when it wants to between those three um, oboes. But I know that later on, the oboes need to condense as 1 and 4 and 2 and 3. And because 4 isn't in the same group, it, it wouldn't work. So I'm not going to use a custom condensing group for the oboes. I also, I am going to exclude the timpani from condensing because they will condense automatically and they don't want to if we're copying this example. A lot of the instruments can condense and that's okay. I know that the trumpets, for example, can condense as one and two and three and four. So I'm going to say in here, let's have, you know, I don't think that ever changes. So I'm going to set up a couple of custom things here for the, the trumpets. The clarinets all, the, these three clarinets will condense together anyway. So will the bassoons. The horns need to condense differently every single page almost, so we'll do that a bit manually as well. Um, similarly, the trombones will condense together. However, we want the trombone, the third trombone, to condense with the tuba. So we need to set up a custom group for that. And if you want one, you could have a custom group for the other two trombones, although I think they would probably sort themselves out anyway. So some of those things that always want to condense the same way, you can set them as custom condensing groups. So now we've got the trumpets are condensed that way, the trombones are condensed this way, um, and the tuba is condensed with a third trombone, and the timpani isn't condensed. But things like these oboes at the beginning, so... I'm going to click at the beginning over here. I'm going to go to engrave mode and I'm going to go to engrave condensing change. This is where you can have a play with the manual condensing options uh, and what's going on. And you also want to turn on the signpost so we can see what's going on. So let's go condensing change. And for the oboes, at this point at the beginning, we turn on the condensing approach and I want one, I'm just dragging that one over, two three, they're all going to be the same, all in the same upstem, don't need a downstem. Oboe four needs an extra staff with oboe four. So press OK. And now I've got, see, the, and now I've got a condensing flag as well. So my oboes are now condensing the same as um, as, uh, as on the original there. Um, also, now I've got this and it's selected, I can just press enter and I can go back to this dialogue and I can say the horns want to condense at the beginning anyway, as one two, three, four, and in a separate staff, we want five, six, and seven. Oops, I've added that to a downstem voice by accident. Five, six, and seven. All in the upstem, that's fine. They're all using the same stem. They're basically all playing the same thing. Um, don't think I need anything else at this point, so let's uh, let's carry on. So now I've got my oboes condensing like that, and I've got my horns condensing like this. There's also some label options. If you have a look in the engraving options, so Command or Control Shift E for engraving options, in your staff labels you can set how various things set. So for example, if you want the adjacent single players um, to be labeled in the middle, 
then you can do that. Um, this is using this on lots of the subsequent pages of this uh, score, so we'll turn those on for, for some of these instruments if you want them. There's a few other labeling options and things in here of you know how things display. Um, there's also things for whether you want to ignore the stem allocation and always display it this way, or do you want to follow the stem allocation? Uh, this is this will give you a more consistent look across the whole piece, but you won't necessarily be able to tell what condensing is doing. This one will tell you what the condensing is doing in every single system. So you you choose which one you want on those. Maybe depend which example you're copying. I also don't want these extra um, system objects. So in layout options, staves and systems, I can turn all these things that I turned on earlier. I can turn them all off again. There we go. So they've all disappeared. Now on the next page, the horns want to condense differently. Um, so let me just have a check as to, I think it's the next page. One, two, three, four. Oh, no, no, the next page is actually OK. Uh, was anybody different on the... No, they're not different on the next page. OK, so it's, I think it's the third page onwards. I think some of the other condensing is a bit different. So let's have a look at some of this. We've uh, we've we've got this far now. Press save. I know there's an auto save. I still press save. Um, let me just have a check of the comments for a minute. Don't forget to reactivate playback. Yep, very good point. However... I'm going to cheat. I'm going to switch to another score because we've got a bit more that we can have a play with. So, yes, it's taken me an hour, but I've also been talking through lots of these things that are in here. Um, I notice I've got a, a clash here, which means I've forgotten to copy something as well. I think. What's going on with the trumpets? It's going to annoy me otherwise. Oh, no, it's because... Yes, yeah, look, this one. It wasn't in the other trumpet, so it thought it was different. There you go. That's why you want to be careful and make sure you copy literally to the staff below so that you don't get extra items that you didn't want and Dorigo trying to be too clever with the condensing. There we go. Right. Now, um, I'm going to switch over for a second to a slightly longer version of the same thing. And then we can have a listen to it, if that's all right. I'm going to activate playback for the new project. Oh, Mark's mentioned another one. Bar 6, the dynamic on trombone 3 is not below. Sorry, I must have, in my um, speed, I haven't really sanity checked this one because of the tuba. Ah, oh, yes. Um, that's also because Dorico's adding... Oh, um, I can't show you. I've, I've got the file open. In the um, condensing options here... Uh, sorry, <laughs> in here... Uh, which is the notation options condensing um i didn't uh the what you're doing hide active rest and label the active player or not i think was the option that i hadn't done so it was labeling things very particularly instead of hiding any, any of the extra things and that was probably the the trombone and tuba um issue there uh anyway so here is um, a slightly longer version because I got a little bit further with it yesterday. So this is about 40-ish bars of, of the same thing. Um, so let's have... I am now should never do this live, but I'm going to anyway. At the moment, the playback on this one is Halion. So this is the default Dorico playback. Now, on all of the things I'm going to do here, I'm not going to tweak anything, dynamics or anything else. So... In Halion, the instruments are okay, but they're not necessarily exactly balanced for an orchestra or, or anything else. So if I press play, let's just have a listen to this one.
That was an abrupt end, wasn't it? Um, I've just noticed an error with it as well, so apologies for that. I think the symbol part at one point is wrong. Anyway, let's have a quick comparison with some other things as well, just for fun. I thought at the end, just for fun. So we go to play, we go to play, playback template, and we load, let's try Note Performer. So Note Performer... Now, a note performer is balanced for an orchestra. You know, this is ideal territory for note performer, really. So now, from this point on, if you're not aware, these are all sample libraries which are available as additional optional extras for Dorico if you want to. And I thought, just for fun, let's try playing them all back with you know, this short example with some other options. So note performer loads fairly quick. And you see up here, I've now got a green play button already. So I'm going to press play and see how note performer sounds. <laughs> So same ending. Um, so that's that's the note performer. It's you know supposed to be balanced. So now something you should never probably do in a live stream. Let's try some others. So on this system, I also happen to have some VSL stuff. I've got the VSL sing. I've got the synchronized special edition. So let's try this now. This can sound very nice, but as I said. I've not done any tweaking to any of the playback. I'm using exactly the same file. I've just entered all of the notes manually, as you saw me do. But I did this yesterday and did a slightly longer example. Um, so there's no live data. There's no live CC data that you might use if you were doing this um, you know, your, yourself. Really, a lot of the, those libraries, VSL and others, are designed for you to play the, the the things in. They're definitely designed for you to tweak the CC data and everything else. I'm not going to do any of that. I'm just going to literally do a direct comparison to see how this one sounds. And I can see in the chat a couple of people have mentioned BBCSO. If this one goes all right, I'll load it in BBCSO, at least core, in a minute. But So here's a VSL version. When I get a green playback here, um, thing in a minute because it's going to take a minute. There we go, we've got a green playhead, okay? So now in play mode over here, Dorico has loaded all of these, and when I press the little E here, it's now going to play through the Synchron player for the uh, for VSL. Now, this might not be a really fair test for them, because, like I said, you the idea is, is to use this library in a door, but if you just want to do it a bit like Note Performer and kind of just press go and see what happens, let's press go and see what happens. the same ending um so you know maybe that's not fair to a library that costs a lot of money that you can actually tweak an awful lot more if you want to spend time on it but i thought it was a you know a useful just by loading the playback template to have a look at 
what the you know the, the kind of things you would get yes you could balance things in the mixer and, and anything else i noticed a couple of people in the chat saying well you know balancing between techniques now i and i understand that one in fact let's let's do this next one because you'll you'll probably get that from this this next one as well so there's um I'm going to load BBC SO Core because that's on, on this computer. So it's not the Pro Spitfire BBC SO one. It's the Core one. Um, the, the Pro one has some extra instruments, doesn't it? Some lower-end instruments, some high-end instruments, and I think some new techniques, but I think they're the solo players ones from memory. Anyway, this is the, the Core template that I've done for BBC SO, and you can download it from um, actually one of their websites, or if you go to dorico.com forward slash resources, then you can get the template for this one if you have this library. The VSL playback templates are available on their website in the My VSL section, um, and Note Performer comes with Note Performer anyway. Now, the problem with this library is... It's going to take a little while to load. So you can see it's loading all the instruments in here. And if I click this little E, then we'll wait until the interface turns up. Now, if you're going to be using this library, I also recommend you get one of these. It's a Rubik's Cube. The green screen is making this not work terribly well. Um, but I'm going to see... Um, I should have started this earlier. This is a you know it's a, just a mixed up Rubik's Cube. Can I complete this quicker? That, and I'm not very good at these. Um, the... Can I can do this quicker than BBC SO can? Now, you you might want to press pause on the video. We're going to make a cup of tea. See, the interface has appeared. Now, what we're waiting for is the um, the number at the top that says memory that's going up here and this green, this little light. When the light, light stops flashing and when the memory stops going up, then we know it's done. Um, and in the meantime, I'm just doing a Ruby's Cube. So um, talk amongst yourselves. And um, I think I'm not going to manage to do this uh, quick enough today. But let's give it a quick go and see how far I can get. It's not really professional, is it, this? White bottom. Yep. Yeah. Uh, how far has it got? Oh, it's about halfway there. I'm not. Uh... Two rows. Oh. As you can tell, I'm not a speed cuber. I also know how far it's probably going to have to get to load all the samples. If you're wondering why is it this slow, I don't know. Ask Spitfire? I'm not sure. This is not going well. I think it needs to get to about 6.6. .6. I think it's going to beat me. We're close, we're close. Oh no! It beat me. Okay, it's got to 6.6. .6. Uh, I nearly got there. I've got a couple of rows done. Anyway, so it's now loaded all of the samples. So let's see how BBC SO sounds. Now, somebody mentioned about techniques. I do know in this one, because again, it's designed to be used in a door, the, the volumes between the different techniques do tend to be a bit different. And if anybody wants to look into this more and tell me how they'd like me to tweak the template more, that'd be great. And I think it can depend on the piece of music. I also know for this one that in the expression map for the strings... I think it's the legatos are a bit too slow to do the technique we need at the end with the slurs on it, whereas it was lots of you know two note uh, slurs. They're designed for long legato slur passages. So this legato one here, I'm going to uh, tick um, the enable to get rid of the legato, so it won't use the legato patch because in this piece it's it's not going to work. That's the only tweak I'm going to make. So again, there's no smoothing of you know expression or anything else. It's just going to be basically the Dorico defaults, so literally switching the, the playback template. And then there would be lots of other tweaks you could probably do. I'm just going to press play and see what happens.
There you go. So that's the BBC SO playing the same thing. So I just thought it was, you know, useful to have a have a listen to. Like I said, with either of those libraries, you can make either of them sound an awful lot better if you want to, because you can tweak things an awful lot more. So don't just go on, you know, well, that didn't sound fantastic, so I'm not buying it. There's a lot of tweaking you can do if you want ultra realistic playback for any of those uh you know, for, for any of those libraries for, um, from Dorico. Um, sorry, I'm just distracted because um, I suddenly realised while that was playing back that I probably should have done this and finished the cube. So I've done it now. Look, 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 the yellow and the green disappear. Interesting. Green screen. Anyway, so, you know, I just thought it was interesting to have a look at literally inputting some notes without doing any, you know, like I said, controller changes or anything else. And if you are interested in this kind of thing, and you, especially if you own one of these libraries, I noticed, for example, at the beginning, you know, even when the, sw the strings switched from the short notes here to the long note, there was a volume change because the two samples that it's using are different. I should probably look in a bit more at how to tweaking these, but I haven't done any, you know, direct comparisons. I've mapped them, but I haven't, you know, tried to balance everything automatically. So if you're interested in those, let me know. So I think that's probably enough for today's session because it's been quite long. Oh, although I've just had a thought. Somebody did say when we announced this session, and I then said, oh, let's just go back to the defaults for a minute. Um, somebody did say, oh, by the way, oh, no, was it was it I mentioned it? Yeah, this week was um, uh, International Piano Day because it was day 88. Was it Tuesday? Somebody remind me. I think it was Tuesday. Um, so somebody said, oh, you should do a piano reduction. I did have a quick look at doing a, a piano reduction of this bit. Um, so... Although we've, we've finished this one, in this file, there is at the bottom also a piano. Um, and I've done a full score with piano as well. So um, I've kind of looked at it. I did try and do the automatic, you know, what would happen if you did an automatic um, option. So when you right click, the paste special also has reduce and explode. I didn't do the entire piece. I've done it in small sections. In some cases, I've just used copy and paste. In some cases, I have used a bit of the reduce option to take some of the chords out of the brass and, and things like that. But in a relatively short, just for fun, I did a, a quick piano version. It's not that good either, but... What do you do with the thing? I put a trill? I don't know. Apologies to Marla. So, you know, it it was just a bit of fun, really. You know, you and you can, you know, it, I'm, I'm not, I can't play it either, but. So anyway, it was a bit of fun. So, yes, I did a piano reduction, but it was a bit of, you know, manual and copy and paste and some of the reduce option, but I just thought it was fun. So you know, while it's, you know, International Piano Day week, I thought that was a bit of fun. Um, there was a couple of questions I'm just going to look at as well. So bear with me a second and just while I look at these. Um, let me just check. There was a... Hang on, there was one... Accent on the brasses that's clearly not in the phrase. Oh, sorry. Was that me or one of the libraries? Um, is it possible to work on the MIDI data in Dorico 4 just like in a door? Yes. Now, we've not looked at any of that mode. So in... The, and let's start with the full score. And let's presume we're doing this in the kind of un uncondensed version here. For anything you've selected here... Of course, in this lower zone here, you have all the MIDI control if you want it. But if you've added CC data for one of the libraries in here, that might not be the CC data you want for another library. So anything you've added may not help another library. And I wanted to do a literal direct switch. So there's no extra MIDI data in here. You can, if you want to make this work for your particular library and the swells and everything else and the volumes and everything else, you can do that. But at the moment, I, for this example, I just thought I'd kind of give you a bare bones, you know, what happens with the defaults. But yes, you, you can do that. Um, there was also, I'm sure I saw somebody mentioned, 
The Orchestral Tools Berlin. Yes, I'm, I'm working on it, actually. Um, or I've got some of that in progress. So Orchestral Tools Berlin is another library um, and that I'm looking at, or at least the version that they've done with Berkeley um, for the, the students at Berkeley that you can buy, which is a, a cheaper version anyway. Um, we're, lo we're looking at yeah, doing that one. So yes, hopefully. And I'm... I, um, VSL have done a load of their other libraries as well. So VSL tend to work on their own libraries, which is great because they know their libraries. Um, Spitfire don't, although the uh, Abbey Road 2, which is just strings, um, I've nearly finished that one, I think. Um, but they, they could take quite a while, these, and I don't necessarily know the libraries. So if there's another library manufacturer is working on expression maps for it and playback templates, that would be great. Um, there's the oh hang on um key editor yes we've just looked at that one you can edit the why are there so few iconica demos um i have done icon there's an iconica playback template and i have done some with iconica the challenge from really with iconica is because lots of those instruments are so editable in their own interface it loads a lot of extra data into the Dorico project. So unfortunately, Iconica is one of those where it's best to use it with um, VE Pro, which is a, a standalone program from uh, VSL that you load all the samples into. But because it contains all the sample data, I'm not in the camera, am I? It contains all the sample data, and Dorico can just reference it. The loading can be quicker because you don't have to load it every time. You know, you can have that open once and Dorico projects can open and close and they all reference the same data. So it can be quite a useful option. I did show it using Iconica in a session that we did for Iconica, but I don't have all of that running at the moment, so I can't easily demo that in, uh, in Iconica. Maybe I should. Maybe I should you know, do another version of this with Iconica. Um, but yes, you know, Iconica is another one and that one is from uh, from Steinberg. Um, let me just, oh, hang on. Let me just check the chat. It just scrolled on me without me checking. Bear with me. Somebody has to mend Note Performer 4. I don't know of anything. I think they're working on a new version, but don't know. Um, Jeff Kellen, the piano reduction mention was you, was it? Yes, I knew somebody did. Yeah, sorry. Um, Yes, Note Performer is still being developed. Yes, they they are working on it. I think there's, uh, I I think the next version, hopefully, I don't know, would be uh, Apple Silicon as well, which would be nice. Um, let me just check the more comments. Any tips for the best piano sound on Dorico? It really depends on the style you're working with, but I've heard, I've I've tried a few. Um, I've actually heard the Keyscape one is quite nice, but I've not actually got that one to try it. Um, so it really depends, and it also depends, do you want one that kind of sticks out and works for pop as well, or do you want it to work blend with an orchestra, or are you doing just solo piano? You can end up with a different piano for each, you know, for, for each piece, for each style. So I don't think there is one best. It really depends on the style you want. They should all work with Dorico, and they don't, most of them don't really need an expression map because there's not many really many techniques. It's just how the dynamics are controlled. Um, let me. I think we're okay now. Is it possible to condense a B flat clarinet and A flat clarinet that are being held by the same player? Dorico at the moment can only condense the first instrument that a player is holding. So if the first instrument they're holding is a B flat clarinet, then it can't at the moment also condense the A clarinet. Hopefully, that's something we'll work on and add in the future. Um, somebody said they like the VSL Synchron Bosendorfer. Yep, there are some in, in that library. Also noticeable things like the BBC SO uh, that we just used, that doesn't have a piano at all. Um, so in you can also make combined playback templates which contain the brass you want from one library, the strings you want from another, the piano from another library, and load all that in one go as well from multiple different libraries. Um, if double instruments are too loud in the balance, is there a way to solve it? Well, the double instruments would all be individual faders. So um, you have the mixers in Dorico, you can balance them in there, as well as the key editor and the CC lanes that you can edit things in there as well. So if you need to balance um, instruments kind of generally, then the mixer is probably a good place to start, um, if nowhere else, if you've got two things playing, playing the same thing. And if you don't want it as an overall, the mixer is basically uh, for the entire piece, because at least... At the moment, maybe one day, you can't automate the Dorico mixer. But in the uh, controller lanes, you can draw in dynamics curves. Um, Dorico 3.5 has a dynamics um, 
uh, lane that you can draw them in. It will be coming back in Dorico 4 shortly, but it isn't there at the moment. But you can tweak the individual. So, for example, some of the libraries use CC11 or CC1 for dynamics, and you can draw those in if you want to as well. If you need to balance particular bits, even particular notes, if you want to kind of drop you know the, the volume for some of those, and none of that affects the written dynamic on the score. So the players are all getting uh, what they need. And what we didn't look at here, why did we you know do the conden why did we do the condensing that way? It's the way Dorico works because then you've got all of the individual parts. So I haven't shown you any of the, the, the parts in this one, but they're all here. So if you pick one of the parts for any of the things we've entered, they all have their individual notes. You know, all separate horn parts here, they all have all of their individual parts already all done because we wrote the notes for each individual horn and got Dorico to do the condensing to put those together for the score. So that's why it goes that way around. Um, let me just check to see if there are any other comments. Bear with me a second. I think we're good. A demo using the a big band score. There's an idea. Have you got one? Um, the problem normally with the big band stuff is finding something that we won't have a copyright issue with. So if you have something that we could use. Maybe Stan Martin's out there and uh, he's got something we could use. I don't know, or somebody. Um, then, yes, that would be quite good to look at. Some libraries also support things like the falls um, and, you know, various brass, sorry, various jazz techniques uh, for those kind of things and those instruments as well. So, yeah, it'd be good to look at some of those as well, I think, and, uh, and have a look at them. Um, I guess the um, Fable Sounds libraries, the Broadway Big Band, Maybe it would be good to maybe link it with one of those libraries. Hmm. I've just made a load of work for myself, haven't I? Okay, forget I said that. But yes, it would be good to do a, a, a big band um, one at some point. Will those files be available for download? Uh, if you like. Um, I could put them on Facebook. I guess I could probably, maybe I'll be able to attach them underneath this video or email me. Email discoverdorico at steinberg.de and I'll send you this Marla file. It's only 40 odd bars that I've done. It's got a random piano reduction that you might not want. Um, but yes, if you want this one and then you can have a look and see what mistakes I made or uh, anything else, compare it to the original. Uh, and if you get any further with this piece and you want to send me a version back, that'd be great. Thanks very much. Um... No, I don't know when Note Performer will be native to M1. You'd have to ask the Note Performer guys, sorry. Um, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, ask Mr. Wallander directly. Um, oh, and an offer potentially for some big band charts. That'd be good. Ornaments support anytime soon. Some of them work, some of them don't. So Mordants don't at the moment. It's They're on the list, certainly, along with many other things. There's also a vote here for Pianotech. Um, Pianotech does have some lovely options. Again, it depends what you want to use it for. It can be really nice for some things, and for other things, uh, you know, it not necessarily. It doesn't use as much resources because it's modelled instead of samples, so that's very good, um, a very good option. Um, inserts, uh, insights for further integrations between Dorico and Cubase. We'd, we'll do them. What does in, What does integration mean? It's a big word. Who knows? But at some point, um, you know, the it's interesting. It'd be interesting to know what you mean by the going back and back and forth. What is it you're doing in one that you want to do in the other? Is there actually a useful thing that we can add in Dorico as an option as well, or do you need audio alongside the you know the, the Dorico file? So you need a bit of both. Let's um, you know get in touch. Let us know. So. Can I still have the file if I only want it for the piano reduction? Yes. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's laughable, but there you go. So I think we'll we'll end it there. I think that's one of the longer ones we've done. Um, and we only got that's it, two pages in. What's that? About 14 bars? Sorry about that. But I'll send you the longer version if you want it, which is about 40 bars. And it's the same, you know, all of the other bars then, it's the same kind of concepts that I would use uh, in the way I'm doing them. So what should we do next? Should we pick another orchestral something? Should we do a big band one? Should we do, you know, is this kind of style of kind of follow along good? Or do you want to look more in depth at particular features like condensing or something else? Um, you know, if you have ideas of what you'd like to look at in these live streams, then please let me know. Email address is discoverdorico. That's all one word, discoverdorico at steinberg.de. And I'll aim to do one of these at the end of every month. So thank you for joining live. And uh, I'll hopefully see you all next time. Thank you very much.